Hello friends, how is everyone doing? Today we are gonna unhaul some becks. <laughs> so if you've been a regular viewer on my channel, you know I've run out of space. I've run out of space with my current setup. I am hopefully gonna be moving out of home in, in a couple months, well not in a couple months, probably sometime within the next year if we're being honest because moving takes a long time. But um, maybe like six to eight months is a realistic time. I don't know. At some point I'm gonna be moving and so there's no point really changing the setup. So we're just trying to live in it for as long as possible now. I think I'm gonna have to get another, another TBR cart to go into the next room. And my plan is to do a really big unhaul when we move out. When I take all these books out there's so many books behind here that I don't even remember right here but I have to take all these books out and do like a big audit of my books and decide what I'm keeping in the move but we need some space in the short term we need some space I just need a bit of space if that's okay <laughs> yeah. yeah so today what we're going to be doing is my patrons have sent me some different unhaul categories and what we're going to have we're going to have a spinny wheel with the categories and when we land on one then I'm going to do a random number generator of between one and five to determine how many books of that category I have to unhaul. I think it's going to be a really fun way to do an unhaul challenge. I'm aiming to unhaul maybe like 20, 25 books in this I'm guessing about that so shall we just get into it but before we unhaul books I want to chat about something I'm never going to unhaul <laughs> and that is the sponsor of Jay's video my serious light from serious readers you guys know if you watch my channel a lot I love my serious light I use it every single day when reading if you don't know it is a reading light and it's just perfect it's the perfect reading light you could ever imagine in your entire life it feels so fresh on the eyes I don't have to describe it like when I'm reading it just makes reading so so easy it has daylight wavelength technology that replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as possible which is something really unique not any other light has this it's you know special to their lights and rather than being blue light that kind of sets off signals in the brain that we don't need or whether being not an efficient light it's a really really great light for reading biologically <laughs> or in the brain I don't know it, uh, it gels well with the brain and I feel that when reading I absolutely love my serious light I cannot recommend it enough it makes me want to read I feel like I read quicker when I'm using it I read more I'm more incentivized to read. I have the high definition light which has a dimmer so I can adjust the strength of the light. I also have the wireless one so I plug it in to charge it and then I can move it about. So sometimes when I'm doing reading sprints at my desk with my patrons I'll move the light over there to help me read. I predominantly read in bed so that's where it's set up but you know if you read in many places around your house you can move it around. I have got a code for you guys which is MWB24 which gets you a hundred pounds off a high definition light. These are an investment but I think it's if you're like a reader reader <laughs> It's one of the best investments you can make. I also think it would be great for like crafting, like knitting or crocheting or jigsaw or something like that. I think it's a perfect light for, for that as well. So my code gets you a hundred pounds off a higher definition light plus free UK delivery. So you can get it delivered in the, anywhere else in the world. They can fit it with different plugs if you need a US or a EU plug, but um, the code is just for free UK delivery. So I'll leave a link down below. You guys should definitely check it out. I love my serious light so much. It's a wonderful, wonderful reading investment and I cannot recommend recommend you guys check it out enough. Okay, I guess it's time to start the unhaul. I'm really proud of myself. I've come from the days when I like hated unhauling. Now I feel okay about it. I feel like I've gotten over unhauling, but uh, there were days when I like, I couldn't even, you know, imagine unhauling Vex. Let's go to our spinny wheel first and tap to spin for our first category. Again, we'll just keep playing this until I've probably unhauled like 2025. <gasps> no, no. <laughs> Sorry, some of these some of these categories make me laugh so much because they're from Oh wait, we got by a man. I thought it was gonna be nice. <laughs> these are suggested by my my patrons. By a man. And then let's generate a number. Three. Okay, three books by a man. And these can be books I've read or books I haven't read. Now here's the thing. There's just so many the, the books that are up front are really not our biggest <laughs> probably culprits. We need to look behind. What do I have the most books by a man? Oh my god. Oh my god, guys. <laughs> what are we hiding here? That's not by a man. Oh, this is by a man. Okay, it's probably time to unhaul this. Okay, let's ignore the state of the shelves. First book, The Murder Game by Tom Hindle. One of the worst books I read last year. It betrayed me as a murder mystery. It's not a murder game. It tells you, oh, they're, they're playing a murder mystery game and people get murdered at the time. They never play the game. They think they're going to play the game and then they don't. Murder! 
It's an isolated murder mystery and it's just not good. It's, it, it, it lied to me multiple times. <laughs> it lied to me. I was so sad about this one. And here's the thing, Tom Hindle is one of the authors publishing like true classic homage to the genre of murder mysteries, you know, in the present day. Like he's got one out at the moment called like Murder on Lake Garda or something like that. And I want to want to read them, but I feel like I have to swear him off. So the murder game is gone. Woo! Okay, anything else back here? Oh, I've got another one. I've got another one. We've got Where There Was Fire by John Manuel Arias. This was a book club or like re read along pick for when I did my trip to Costa Rica with some of you guys, which was the best thing that I've ever done. But this book was not very good. <laughs> we all hated it. We all hated this book. It was strange. There was a lot of descriptions of people weeing, which I didn't appreciate or things pissing them so it was so strange yeah. disgusting disgusting and it was just poorly written we all hated it none of us liked this book none of us liked either of the books we picked as our costa rica book club picks which is sad yeah this didn't work for any of us and it's like half family saga half like political critique and i think the political well it's not even that it's more like 70 30 and the political critique is the 30 percent, but it's the more interesting part of it in my opinion and i would have liked more but I'm surprised I haven't unhauled this yet because none of us like this. Okay, one more man book. <laughs> one more man book. Anything else back here? Um, I guess I could unhaul that. Oh, do I, I don't think I want to unhaul Fatal Crossing. I don't want to like double, double kill. See, some of these books back here are books I really enjoyed. I just don't have room for them on my shelves. I think let's unhaul this because I didn't, I think I gave this two stars. I d do I want to unhaul this? Yeah, I can't see myself ever talking about this book again because I've forgotten most of what's happened. My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. I've really enjoyed some other Stephen Graham Jones. I love Burning and Indians, but this one just didn't work for me. This was a patron book club pick as well. God, the, the, the book club picks are getting killed over here. And this one's about Jade, who's like a slasher obsessive. And then like slasher movie starts playing out actually like in her town and I just didn't like it I didn't like it I found it very very boring I didn't like the writing style like I said I've enjoyed other Stephen Graham Jones what other ones have I read from him I think I've read like a short story from him that I enjoyed but yeah I know some people have loved this one but it just did not work for me sadly okay whoo first category done what are we gonna do next where's our next category <gasps> this one's hard. Was a five star prediction. Okay, let's see how many we have to unhaul. I'm hoping it'll be low. Two. Okay, two books that were a five star prediction. Um. <laughs> Holy shit. What was a five star prediction that I want to unhaul? Let's have a look behind here in fantasy. Oh, I didn't know I had that back there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to go for this one first. This is a book I know a lot of people love like really, really love. And it is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. I read this not long after I'd read uh, Legends and Lattes and I really thought Cozy Fantasy was about to be my thing. I thought, oh, Cozy Fantasy, I'm gonna be in love with Cozy Fantasy, isn't life gonna be great? And uh, yeah, I didn't like this. I didn't like this as much as everyone else's. I know other people have enjoyed this. It's witches and you know, witches are one of my, I'm pretty sure witches is one of my thing in five star order that I love. I love witches. I love cozy fantasy, but this one just did not work for me. I found the romance uninteresting. I found the writing annoying for some reason. I can't, I've forgotten a lot to do with this book. I'm okay with letting this one go and passing it on. I, I usually let my patrons have first dibs on the books I'm unholding before I take them to the charity shop. And I'm okay with this going to like a better home that will love it more. This one I was really sad by. I was really sad by because I thought Cozy Fantasy was about to be my thing, but like, I think I need to stay away from Cozy Fantasy with a really strong romantic plot. Like, Legend of Lattes has a kind of sub so, I feel like a sub-sub romance plot and that's okay for me but cozy fantasy that are really just like cozy romanticy don't work for me and um I, I I should have loved this found family is another one these I have this is so many of my buzzwords but alas <laughs> we were not successful okay four books on hold already what can I in good faith say was a five-star prediction that I just did not enjoy because I don't want to lie <laughs> Right, I am going to unhaul The Christmas Murder Game by Alexandra Benedict because I thought I would love this. There's a lot of like me being let down by murder mysteries <laughs> so far here. I thought I would love this. I thought it'd be a campy Christmassy murder mystery. I'm pretty sure I DNF'd this. I could not get through it. It was so bad. The writing was so bad. The characters were so annoying. It was so dumb. Like it's bad. Yeah. Bad. 
Yeah. And I don't and think I didn't you need to speak about all these other things. And you no, it's kind of bad. It's all I just need you to say that to me. Like, did I finish it? I don't think I did. I just couldn't get through it. I remember like reading this near Christmas time and I was like, I could be spending time with my family or I could be reading this book. And God, I am not reading this book. I'm not going to read this book. I really thought I was going to love it. And then this author keeps publishing Christmas Eve Murder Mysteries. And the idea of that, like, I love the idea of Christmas Eve Murder Mysteries. Every Christmas, I love to read Christmas Eve esque murder mysteries in the hope that I will find a book I love and I don't I don't and this book really like set so a seed of distrust with cozy mystery Christmassy mysteries for me because this was so bad it was so like I should love it as a family tree there's a puzzle within a puzzle like there's like 12 days of anagrams like there's anagrams that give you clues and it tells you like in what chapter what the anagrams are like I should have loved this but it was bad it was bad okay next category Oh, ah, dual timeline. That's gonna be tricky because I can't necessarily remember what is dual timeline and what isn't. Let's see how many Rift on Hall is gonna be a lot, isn't it? Oh no, okay. Well, what is dual timeline that I haven't liked? Bloody hell. Oh, okay, no, there's one right here. Wayward, wayward, wayward. I hate, this is like triple timeline. Hated it, hated it, I hated wayward. I'm still so angry that this one two awards in the Goodreads Choice Awards last year. It makes me so mad. You stupid fucking dinosaur! Get the fuck out of here! I hated it. They, they said there were gonna be witches, they weren't witches. There's another theme here. Fake witches. <laughs> Not enough witchiness. Which I think was a category that someone suggested I didn't put it down because I was like, oh, there won't be enough books for that. Turns out there is. It's following three different women who have links to each other throughout time, one in 20, 2019, one in 1942, and one in 1619. And they were just all such archetypal level one editions of that kind of character. You've seen each of these kind of characters before, and in my opinion, they were just like basic versions of what those types of characters are. And because it's triple timeline, I spent 100 pages with each of them. I barely got to know them for a full length novel. So that's number one. I can't believe we got to get out more dual timelines. <laughs> this is really hard. What is dual timeline? What is dual timeline? Approximately 10 hours later. Okay, um, I'm giving up. <laughs> I can only think of one more that I want to unhaul right now. And uh, I just can't think of any more. So we're gonna pretend it said two instead of five. But I am gonna unhaul The Christmas Guest by Peter Sonson. This is kind of like dual timeline in that it's one timeline and then the other rather than going back and forth between two. I think I've already unhauled a lot of dual timelines that I can think of that I want to unhaul or like there's a lot of books where I I feel like the dual timeline went took it from a four to a three you know but I just want to haul them anyway so the Christmas guest by Peter Swanson I'm gonna unhaul me and Tom listened to the audiobook of this on a long drive I think to Wales last year absolutely diabolical it's so bad it's beyond bad it's it was awful we were actually laughing at how bad it was I didn't realize that it was <laughs> Why are you laughing? At how bad the narrative voice was, at how obvious the twists were. I, I can't even, it was actually quite fun. It was quite a fun experience to have together to listen to this awful book. And it was an easy one because it like, you know you're gonna finish it on the car ride. You know, some books you'll start and you're not gonna finish them on the car ride and then you forget about reading them. Whereas this one, like you knew you were gonna finish. So it, it was a nice one for the, for the circumstances, but I, hated this i hated the twist i hate the writing style i hate i hated everything about it so okay now we're giving up on dual timeline because i can't think of any more that i want to unhaul right now hopefully an easier category now um i don't know i'm spinning again because we got was a five star prediction again oh annoying main character or love interest okay and how many are we unhauling of this just one okay annoying main character oh i've got it i've got it I'm unhauling The Housemaid's Secret. Even though I'm gonna have to buy the next one for the Goodreads video this year, I have no interest in holding on to these books. Yeah, The Housemaid's Secret. I found her so annoying. She, oh my God. And the, and some of the love interest in this is so annoying. I mean, the whole book is annoying. I'm unhauling The Housemaid's Secret. Bye bye. See you later. <laughs> and you're going home, sweetie. I hated it, I hated it, I hated it. And I'm gonna have to read like, probably at least two more Freedom McFadden's by the end of the year. I just really deeply despise this book. I also can't remember anything about it. But I just found the main character's decisions annoying and her voice annoying. And I hate everything about this book. I find Freedom McFadden one. No, no, no disrespect Freedom McFadden. I'm sure you're lovely, but your books are not for me, girl. Your books are not 
it'll never be for me. And I'm gonna have to read two more of them this year for the Goodreads Choice Awards, including the sequel, sequel to this, but uh, no interest in keeping it. Okay, eight books unhauled. We're doing well. <laughs> Next category. I just remembered one of them is like Goodreads Choice Awards and we've already unhauled like two Goodreads Choice Awards nominees. Oh, it's giving us the same one again. Oh wait, no. Lied about having a cat in it. <laughs> god funny i can already think of one um three okay number one it's a loud plane outside that's really loud see ya <laughs> i'm gonna unhaul a spoonful of murder even though part of me wants to hold on to this because it'll be in my worst books of the year video at the end of the year and so i probably should hold on to it but it's going um a spoonful of murder by jm hall i can just put pictures up i don't need to hold on to these books this one there's a cat on the cover where is the cat? The cat is not in there. This is an awful murder mystery. <laughs> awful, absolutely diabolical murder mystery. Following these retired teachers solving the murder of their old school friend and these women were so annoying. The book had no cohesion. They barely spent any time with one another. Oh my god, I, I hated it. And I also did this video, I got so annoyed about all the books lying that they had cats in them. No, they didn't. What else lied about having a cat? I feel like days at the Morosaki bookshop, but I don't necessarily want to unhaul that. What else in that video lied about having a cat in it? Because the cat who caught a killer did have a cat in it. And the goodbye cat did. And... So is there any days at Morisaki Bookshop and the Spoonful of Murder that don't have a cat in them? Oh, the Kamigawa Food Detectives I could unhaul. And I'm supposed to unhaul days at the Morisaki Bookshop in order to get like the right number. But I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> I'm happy to unhaul days at the Morisaki Bookshop, but I have no idea where that is. I mean, <laughs> where could that be? No, not there. Not there. Where is this? I just read it. Where have I put it? <laughs> Guys, I have no idea where this book is. I have no idea where this book is. <laughs> where did I put it? I can't see anymore. Okay, no, I'll, I'll just say this didn't lie. But, you know, I'll unhaul The Cat Who Caught a Killer as well, even though it will also be in my worst books of the year video. Because this does have a cat in it. It's very catty, obviously. It doesn't quite fit the prompt, but, like, this cat is not a cat. This cat is not a cat. There's a talking cat, and his cat voice, his cat monologue, is so uncat-like, it pisses me off. If you're gonna write cat, it has to embody a cat. And this cat is just not a cat. It's just not a cat. You may not hold the space for me, and that's okay. But that's a hill I'm gonna fucking die on. Firstly, like, oh, everyone in this book is a bloody Tory, so like, you know, there's that. When cats are so socialist, it's unreal. <laughs> and yeah, it's a fake cat, it's not a real cat, because the cat voice in this is not, is not cat-like at all, at all, not one bit. Okay, that's all we're doing, we're not doing enough of that. Was it only two that we had to do? Oh no, it was three. Well, we're unhauling two. <laughs> this number isn't quite working, is it? Okay, next one. Next category. Here we go, we got it. Okay, Goodreads Choice Award. And how many are we unhauling? Two, right, we've already unhauled a few. So I'm gonna unhaul The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Peckman. I think this is from the year before and it's just an incredibly forgettable domestic thriller between like a husband and wife who are in therapy and their therapist and the goal. I actually can't, Whoa, if you asked me a single thing about how this book turned out, like what the actual twists and plot of this book are, I could not tell, I can't tell you. I remember like the therapist is a bit dodgy and the woman's doing something. I can, I can't remember anything. <laughs> I don't remember, I don't remember, love. I don't remember at all. I really don't, it was an awful long time ago. I can't remember anything about this book. Okay, that's a, that's a sign to let it go, baby. That's a sign to let it go. Yeah, I just did not enjoy this. I think it was like a 2.5. And then I was only trying to read the top 10 that, that year I did this. And it wasn't even in the top 10. It was a waste of a read. I didn't need to read it. Um, yeah, we're gonna unhaul that one. And then we need another one. Whoa, we've already unhauled quite a few of what I would have unhauled for this prompt. Uh, do I wanna unhaul you? I don't want to unhaul that. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I'm gonna unhaul Being Henry by Henry Winkler. Sorry, Henry. I read this for the when I was reading all the winners of the Goodreads Choice Awards at the start of this year. And I'm just so sorry, Henry. I don't know who you are. You are before my time. <laughs> I respect you. But this was just like, it was so boring. 
It was so boring. I'm so sorry, Henry, but I'm I'm unhauling you. I have I had no interest in this book. I read it because I had to. It was fine, you know, but it was written for someone who was a fan of him, and I am not. And this book, I mean, I have no interest in keeping onto it because it's just the massive faces of a man who I have no idea who he really is. Maybe we're just gonna do one more prompt. <laughs> I haven't unhauled maybe enough books, but I'm making some space. Okay. Forgot existed. Okay. I feel like I can do some for this because it's just the ones that are back here. Three. Okay, let's do these three and then we're going to be done. Okay, what is back here that I forgot existed? Some of these are ones I don't necessarily think are bad. I just, yeah, forgot they existed. <laughs> okay, I'm going to unhaul The Fair Fight by uh, Anna Freeman. <laughs> We've got You're Invited by Amanda J. Atissa. This is a thriller that's set on an island at a wedding and it's something to do with friendships and people not liking each other. This was one that I think quite a few people enjoyed, but I just found it again incredibly forgettable. <laughs> this is one again, I couldn't probably tell you a lot of what happens in it. And um, I kind of forgot it was here until I saw it just now when I was looking for Vex. So I think this is an easy one to let go of. I just found this one, yeah, very, very un unengaging. And then one more book. We're gonna unhaul one more book. We're gonna do one more because I don't think I can do any more until we do like the big, big clear out because at the, all I'm doing is making a mess. Oh yeah, I forgot I still owned that. Okay, let's go for this. I'm gonna unhaul White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. This one was the one that made me doubt whether I'd ever enjoy a Tiffany D. Jackson ever. And then I ended up loving The Weight of Blood, which is the release I read after this. This is a haunted house. It says, Get Out meets the hill haunting of Hill House in this chilling YA psychological thriller. This pissed me the fuck off. I, I can't believe if I still own this. This is crazy. <laughs> this pissed me off. I, I did not enjoy this one bit. I don't want to, I, I feel like what I can remember of why I didn't enjoy it is very much wrapped up in the spoiler in the ending, but I didn't enjoy like the lead up. I didn't enjoy the build up, the kind of like hauntingness. I read some really great, I think I read Horrid by Katrina Leno, not too before long before I read this. And that's a great haunted house book. I love a good haunted house book. This just didn't give me haunted house let's just say that so i'm glad me and tiffany jackson have since found love and adoration for one another well she doesn't know me i've just found love for her <laughs> with the weight of blood but i'm ready to let this one go okay friends i think that's all we can unhaul before we do like the big moving out unhaul but we've made a little bit of space i think i mean it's a mess <laughs> it's an absolute mess back there but we've made a little bit of space um i've now got to go put my bookshelves back together because it's absolutely diabolical out here. But thank you for watching me do a little bit of an unhaul. I feel a little bit refreshed, a little bit of summer cleaning. And um, yeah, I just wanted to like make a bit of space before to try and make it possible to live in these bookshelves <laughs> until we do a really big roofless unhaul whenever I'm moving out. That'll be one of the videos that come with moving out. I also really, when we move out, I do want to really document it for you guys. So I think I'll do quite a lot of videos like in the process of moving out. I don't know how interesting interested people be in that but anyways thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you very soon in another video bye